The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the XY Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into the I Comply To or I See To for Cool Dudes suite of tools has been a practice manager who, like me, sees loads of repeatable processes that can become automagic, started the software game back in 2017 and is the first head of a licensee that I've discovered with a Calendly booking form on their website so you can make a time to chat to him. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Anthony Lunn. Thank you, Peter. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Not at all. You are most, most welcome. Look, we'll dive into all things tech in a second, Uh, but just to get to know you a little bit better as a user of technology, what is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? I couldn't narrow it down to one because I'm, I'm such a big emoji user. Nice. Um, so it, it can all depend on who I'm talking to. So being a, <laughs> a completely remote business, we use Microsoft Teams. So nice. it's quite often that I'll give a thumbs up for good work in the team. Yep. If I'm talking to friends or family on text, there might be a, a Hawaiian shuckers or <laughs> even a, a per, the perfect hand signal. signal. Yes, um, and then in marketing emails, so we're creating our own marketing emails. I recently used a, a bomb emoji. Nice. You know what? The, um, the emojis, particularly in subject lines even, can really catch people's eyes, can't they, with yeah, emails? Definitely. I've noticed that with myself. I've started doing it with our clients. I'm like, I'm going to get your attention with an emoji in this subject. It, I need it, you to click. Yeah, definitely. It's actually, I, I, you know, when I'm coming up for marketing ideas, I'll go and look at other large softwares and, and try and yeah. get ideas of the things that they're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I definitely sort of steal a lot of those ideas from, from the big guys. Me too. I'm a, I'm a avid watcher of my own behavior, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> why did I click on that exactly? Yeah. You know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So that's your emojis. If you had to delete everything off your smartphone and just keep three apps, what would you keep? Yeah, I've actually been trying to do this myself. So I've got rid of all the socials, um, <gasps> getting the screen time down. So mm-hmm. if I had to narrow it down to three, the first one I would be keeping would be Microsoft Teams. Again, nice. it's, it's all that. That's a staple of all communication in the business. Mm-hmm. Secondly, I would keep Spotify. So sitting here in the office by myself, I need some background music to keep myself entertained. Yeah. And the third one is actually a bit of a, a, a shameless self-promotion here, but we, we do have an IC2 a projects on a, a mobile version of the app. So I, awesome. I need I need that app to make sure it's make sure it's working, make sure it's improving, and, and you know just mm-hmm. to develop out the product. So um, oh, nice. I, I, I couldn't delete that one and leave leave all the users behind. <laughs> all in, right? We're all in together. <laughs> I love it. So let's dive in. Let's dive into the tool. But let's start a bit higher though, and get just a sense of where this tool sits in the advice tech marketplace. You yeah. know, so. 
who does it sort of normally play alongside and who might you be compared against in a general sense? Yeah, I think uh, well, it's probably, I think it sits in this unique space where we're, we're focusing on really connecting, you know, connecting teams. So right. it's, a bit, it's a bit different to your traditional advice software. But yep. really it's trying to connect the teams in the, the project management and the AFSL management space. Yeah, so the project management thing I want to dive into straight mm. up because it, I could go on a rant here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the managing pipelines and, and you know, uh, backlogs in pipelines and where it gets stuck and how much capacity we have, you know, all that sort of stuff has invariably been really hard in yes. financial advice. It's, it's We can have tools that will give us the individual list of tasks, you know, so your poor power planner knows they have 85 plans they need to create, but any sense of where things are at for the clients and across the board and the stages, you've got to sort of do yourself. You've, you've got to use Trello or something like that. So yeah, correct. is that what prompted you to create that part of the tool? Correct. So yeah, in, okay. in um, previously, you know, you know, advice business, I was using Asana right. and I absolutely loved it. You know, yeah. compared to some of the traditional um, advice softwares, uh, Asana was just so easy to use. You know, nice. Um, build your advice template and assign the tasks, and you could drag and drop, and the functionality was just so much better. Right. Yeah. Um, the limitation I found with Asana and Monday.com and ClickUp and all those sorts of the different apps was I couldn't really integrate it with my CRM. So right. if I was working on a project uh, I, and it was for, you know, Joe Boggs' client, I couldn't assign it to a Joe Boggs' client. Okay. So that's where we sort of build out the, the project management, which is very similar to an Asana and a Monday, but mm. in, integrate it with x So you can pull through your clients and assign okay. it to your CRM. Okay, nice. So it's, it's sort of giving that extra layer over, say, explain what yeah, you're doing, correct. it's giving you that insight. Okay. Correct. And, you okay. know, as soon as even, you know, if every practice is going to be doing their own projects that aren't client, mm. you know, around servicing the client. And especially if you're running your own AFSL, you've got a compliance yep. managers that <laughs> cannot use any of those, you know, if we're talking eggs, plan threads and tasks and things. So yep. they kind of have to go out and find their own separate software anyway. Right. Um, and so what we've done is, is, is really bring all those components into one, one project management space. Nice. And it's, a, it's something that the, potentially the listeners may not become aware of. I, I know that in a lot, I mean, in our practice, we have as many projects as we do client work. Like we're constantly doing <laughs> yeah. that sort of evolution. You know, it's something we've practiced. Um, yes. But for many, they haven't. And so your, your staff being able to look at it you know, a process or a task list or anything like that and it and it cover both yeah. the things to do with clients and the things that aren't to do with clients is really powerful Yeah, because otherwise they're going to be looking at different systems, Correct. which is just frustrating. Correct. Yeah, okay. Exciting. So that's the project management element. I'm assuming then there's got to be some other bits that you guys have added in. What else is there in the yeah, tool? Yeah, correct. So um, we started out at the project management and what we ended up doing was basically – um, building a, a suite of integrated apps. So okay. the, the project manual was, was great, but then I found that revenue management had a bit of a gap as to, to yep. what we're doing with revenue management and then AFSL management and so on. So, so we ended up building these integrated apps. Think of it along the lines of Microsoft 365 where you've got, yep. you've got a subscription, um, you've then got the different apps, and so you work with one particular app as you're working on that part of the business. So it, yep. I kind of like to, you know, describe it's not an all-in-one advice beast that, you know, we're trying to jam a lot into the interface. Right. Um, we're really breaking it down into to, to, to integrated apps that you kind of know what you're working on and then each app can be a lot more simple to use because we're focusing right. on that one part or one segment of the business. Yeah, okay. So it can be uniquely good at what it does because it's just for that part of the business as Correct. opposed to trying to get that one tool that does everything, which yep. we all know they don't do. <laughs> they do. Well, they do bits badly, right? Uh, Anytime uh, we try uh, to get correct. one Correct. Uh, advice yeah. is just so complex that you know, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's too many apps that you need to build. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so in terms of then, so you're going to have a lot of different types of users, right? So there's yeah, well, clearly the advisor can be part of that workflow or, or the project management tool, the principal compliance. 
are you seeing other practices using it all the way through to support? Like is everybody using the tool that yeah, way? Yeah, correct, correct. Okay. Um, and I, I always found this a bit of a challenge because you've got one main band who are going to want to do everything. Mm-hmm. You, you've then got multiple advisor practices that would have a could have a dedicated team that just work on applications and support. Right. You could have a power planning team that only work on the SOAs and so they don't have anything to do with the rest of the process. Yeah. So it, it's sort of where we designed it that it, it, it has project management, but it also has modules around applications tracking and SOA tracking and reviews okay. and so on. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tool that really brings everybody together. Okay, so it really is that whip, that work in progress sort of thing. It's really keeping an eye on all of that. Yes. Um, which as it makes a lot of sense to put some energy into something like this because as we're all trying to get a bit more scale, a bit more capacity, a bit more like, you know, the ability to see more people, then mm. we've got to be monitoring things at that level because yeah, otherwise correct. you have no clue. You can't tell. You know, you, you, and that's exactly right. And that was one of the recent things we did um, because there is so much going on that we we basically I built this a, a news feed. So if, if someone comments on an application, you know, an SOA, your task, whatever it may be, it's like a yeah. like a social news feed. Yep. And so it basically it pulls out all the activity from the different components and you can just you know, make a comment from within the, the news feed. So right, try okay. and make it really easy instead of having to go, oh, there was that application for, for Joe Blogs and now I have to go and navigate and find that task and find that thing and, and then be able to comment and so on. It just brings it all into a, a, a news feed. Yeah, it is um, – it's hard, I think, with our systems often being old school is they're almost used to that old world where we had, you know, folders and subfolders and, yeah. and you were so used to having to dig down and dig back. I remember those old days like, oh, my yeah, goodness, how did correct. we find anything? <laughs> and our systems reflected that, didn't they? There was this real structure you'd had. I mean – I'm showing my age here. You will be too young for this, but I remember the bad old days of backslash DOS rubbish, where you had to know every command. You know, like it's just <laughs> insanity. It's not like that anymore, right? We no. can design these sort of windows for our teams that mean they can get to what they need to get to faster. Yeah, definitely. You know, so why not? Definitely. Um, I think it's definitely about trying to bring the advice space into new, you know, new modern technology and. And it, it kind of needs a tool um, to sort of shake that up and, and change things a bit. Yeah, okay. So in terms of then uh, the types of practices that you're interacting with, then are you finding there's any particular one that this really resonates or vice versa, ones that are like, oh, dude, no, that's not going to work for us? Is there sort <laughs> of a sweet spot for the tool? No, not necessarily. I don't, I don't really find that there's a unique – uh, practice that that it works for. Okay, I think one probably, if anything, sort of less likely the one man band. A lot of a lot right. of the one man bands probably, you know, it's all up in their head. They know where they're at. They don't. Right. They won't necessarily adopt a tool that's going to connect and communicate like this. Yeah. So um, yeah, le- le- less the one man band, more more the more the team approach, and especially approach. if they're if they're outsourcing. So you you got right. you got remote teams that is very hard to communicate and manage. It is, and it's the one thing that often those remote teams, in terms of providers, even don't do well either. Like they don't sort of try and facilitate that either. So you can have these bodies doing work for you in you know off, off, um, offshoring or anything anything like that, and yeah. it's just not integrated. It's not they're not really part of the team, and you've got to use tech to try and fold them in. Yeah, correct. You know? Correct. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Correct. I mean, like yourself, we're virtual as well, and and. The hardest part is making handover as seamless as possible, and it sounds like that's the thing we're focusing on here. It's this yeah, handover, absolutely. making that just squeaky easy, no problem. You don't have to then call the person and go, "Oh, can you just update me on?" or you know that sort of stuff. It's yeah. really trying to make it blindingly obvious what's <laughs> happening. Awesome. So then, the things that it doesn't have then clearly will be like analysis tools or you know that sort of stuff. This it's not. You guys aren't trying to play in that space, is that no, correct? It, no, um, it, the, the tool's not your advice doc. It's not producing an advice document. You know, it, it's not. Yep. It's not going to be comparing product. You know, super funds and investments and doing projections and risk quotes and all that sort of stuff. It's not really producing an SOA. Yep. Um, I would I would say that's your sort of primary advice tool or advice yep. document generation. This is really the more operates, you know, around that and doing the things that, that the advice tool doesn't. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so you mentioned integrations and clearly X plan is one of them. Do you have others, other tools that you integrate with? Yeah. So um, we're integrating with, with X plan um, product Rex is yep. we, we've started product Rex awesome. um, feasibly. So for yep. revenue management, there's feasibly or Revex. So it will yep. pull through the, the feeds from all your revenue management perspective. And we're currently working on integration with fourth line. Okay. Fantastic. So, I guess it's then just, you know, I mean, that covers a broad number of people, particularly with X plan. Um, but I can see value there even. So if somebody couldn't integrate with their core system, if it's not on that list, do you still, them, do you see them still being able to use the tool? Uh, yes. So, okay. Yes. So yeah, definitely X, it's a majority of it come from X plan, but the yep. other one I'm, I'm sort of finding is it's the advice practices that don't have any software at the moment. So don't have yep. a primary um, traditional advice software. Okay. And so it's really just a little, you know, a little basic CRM tool that they can adopt right. to to manage their clients without having yep. to go to the big guys. Yeah, okay. So it gives them that little hub that at least gets them that far. Yeah, correct. They can track so they, progress. They can still create a client. There's a client CRM app in there. Okay. Um, it's not like it has, you know, it's not like an X plan that has the complete CRM and the document generation, all that sort of stuff. But yep. they can still create a client and assign tasks, sorry, assign projects and manage everything that they need to do. Okay, fantastic. But I really like the idea that if they're, you know, have any more than really themselves in the team, <laughs> or themselves plus one, then this will help them keep on top of things, which is one of the challenges the minute you're trying to handle more than a handful of clients. Um, it's just where are things at and what are we doing, you know, um, which is exciting. So then in terms of client interface, I'm betting that there isn't – is there any element that's engaging with the client directly or is it really behind the scenes? So that there's, a, there's a fact find. So there's an, on- yep. there's an online fact find. Um, and an advisor can, you know, create an online fact find, send a link to their client. Um, that fact find can be – from the client can be accessed on the desktop or mobile. So yep. I, I kind of like to picture that. The, the client might have a wine in hand on a on a uh, after a, a long day or a Friday night, whatever it may be, and sitting there on their mobile, completing the completing the fact find, mm-hmm. um, and the advisor can even create custom question sets in there. So okay, uh, awesome. Uh, an example might be around you know what are the the client's ethical investment preferences, if any. Yeah, um, and so they can ask those sorts of questions unique to the, the way they want to ask. So collect the data how they want to collect it. Great. And so that then sits in the CRM? That's where that data goes? Yes. Yeah, so I they could push that they could push that to explain. Yeah. Okay. So any okay. any of the any of the unique you know custom created questions obviously wouldn't go back in. But yep. your 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 assets, liabilities, income, expenses, all those sort of um, pretty standard question sets will go yep. back into explain. Cool. Okay. So and I'm interested because, you know, a lot of the tools now have these fact find things. Mm. What was the trigger for you guys to do that given what you're doing is sort of more operational than yeah. it is client engagement? What was the trigger for you to go, look, we need to add this. This is a feature that's necessary. Um, probably there's, there's, I thought it was a bit, it was a bit of a gap in our software. So yep. when I'm talking about going around the advice document creation piece, we, we weren't really engaging the client to start with. So right. that was one piece, right? We could engage the client, collect the data, push it into X Plan. X Plan would then feed into the project management space and feed into yep. the client CRM. So it was just a bit of a missing piece to actually get all the data and get the process started. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And so, in terms of then um, your current users, you've got people and practices using it. Mm. Then, what is you know some of the features that just don't get used as much as you think they might in the future? Like, what's the stuff that people should be looking a bit harder at? Yeah, I find the um, there's an AF so the AFSL compliance app is right. one that doesn't really get adopted, okay. um, and I kind of I kind of feel that a, a lot of a lot of practices or a lot of you know smaller AFSLs tend to leave that to the compliance consultant. Okay, so they, they might not have the confidence to be able to you know use the, the hairy scary c word that. <laughs> that, um, that people try to, you know, try to find it hard to tackle a bit. So, yeah, um, this tool is really making that as simple as possible. So, giving you a tool to manage the AFSL on a day to day basis, um, which still, you know, still works in tandem with the compliance consultant. 
Okay. So you, you may have a, a senior para planner who is, is quite experienced in, in, in all things compliance, yep. um, but doesn't quite have the tools to, to, to wrap their head around what that job actually involves. Yeah. Okay. And so what type of, th- on a day-to-day basis, what type of things would they be doing in that, that app or that section of the yeah, tool? So it's managing all your, your AFSL registers. So you know, okay. policy registers, um, complaints, breaches. Yep. Um, there, there's even, if you look at it from an AFSL point of view, the advisors themselves are the clients, right? So yeah, okay. we're taking yep. file notes and hairy, scary conversations we may, we may have had with advisors. So yep. Um, anything that's really, you know, demonstrating to, to ASIC that the advice monitoring is happening and keeping records of it in a, in a, in an easy to use software. Which is really important because it's one of those things that isn't focused on your right. It's just not, even if it's not your own AFSL, to have some place where those things can go and the team can be trained to know how to, like, you know, you can make that even more thorough than it might otherwise be. Yeah. Um, the more process driven and automatic that stuff is, the better. Yeah, you know, correct. that it's just, it's all there. It's easy. I just enter it here and I update it there and I tick that box. And like, we've got to normalize these things because it's, it is just part of the business. Yeah. Right? That's it's right. just part of what we do. It shouldn't be this other thing. You Tr- know? <laughs> Traditionally, for, for example, in all the advice registers, we seem to just have an Excel spreadsheet. And and we're just using Excel spreadsheets for everything when it comes to compliance. And yep. we don't do that when servicing the client. We're, yep. we're good at looking for um, technology solutions to service the client. Um, yep. But then when it comes to managing the AFSL, we're seeing the operating not off Excel sheets. Yeah, and it's like you're you're absolutely right, and it's um it creates another sort of mental friction too as well. You know, it's, oh, I'm gonna have to go over there and do that thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. whereas if it can be wherever you are or close yeah. to it, uh, right. then it means you just get it done right. We'll just have to register that. You know, he didn't like the fact we called him at nine p.m. Very good, whatever. <laughs> like whatever it is, you just get it done right. You just sort of put it in the system and proceed accordingly. Yeah. Um, and I think you're right. The normalizing of compliance behaviors can make such a difference to a practice um and it sort of you know uh, rips out some of the fear uh, yeah, about that sort definitely. of thing yeah so in aside from that are there any other elements of the app then that so we've got the uh compliance or the afsl element we've got the um, pipeline or the project management what else is there a crm that can sort of be the what's a, like a basic CRM, basic CRM um, for people. Yeah, yeah. correct. Um, so your basic CRM, if you're integrated with X Plan, it still pulls through assets, liabilities, income, all those sorts okay. of details. Um, if you have an IPS license, you can view portfolios. Okay. So it's quite heavily I- embedded as far as the you know the data that pulls through from X Plan. Yep. yep. Um, another one is managing service agreements. So man- right. managing managing Oof. opt-ins and, and yep. service agreements. So you can set all your templates for, for generating the service agreements. Yep. If you use RevX, so it's quite common to use RevX, um, yep. and you can pull through the RevX data mm-hmm. um, linked with your X-Plan. So it sort of creates a seamless connection between X-Plan and RevX to then pull all the existing um, fees that the client has paid. Um, and we can send them a, a, a link to then click to opt in. Fantastic. Cause that's, oh, it's just horrible as that stuff. Um, <laughs> it's, it's the layers of, of manual stuff. If you don't have it, you know, all coordinated and, and set up is, is truly horrible. I mean, it's bad enough that there's a level of provider then, you know, challenges that we've all got to go through as well, but just getting that first step streamlined. Yeah. Correct. Um, I mean, for some practices, you, it's a whole person that's doing yeah, this stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's just crazy. So, oh, awesome. Okay. So um, working with RevX, in terms of down the track, are there any, do you have any plans on the integration front? Like is there, I know you mentioned product Rex and the others. So is there any more that you're sort of thinking of down the track that you'll start integrating with? Um, no, not necessarily. It's, it's, yep. if, if users come and, you know, suggest an integration, then we're definitely keen to look at it. I'm, I'm probably not really looking or actively looking to go and integrate with, um, you know, some of the uh, uh, advisor logic or advice yep. intelligence Other. and those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, mainly because it is it is such a big job. Like yeah. in- integrating with those CRMs is it's horrible. Is a huge task. Like, yeah. Um, and and to do that across multiple. Um, Multiple advice Providers softwares. And, yeah. 
huge. Right? It is. It's horrible. I'm, it's probably more um, building out the capabilities of, of the apps and growing that app yep. suite a, a bit yeah, okay. more. So one I'm working at the moment is a marketing app. Okay. And awesome. so for um, advice practices that would be sending out their newsletters to clients, so mm -hmm. think, uh, think along the lines of a MailChimp where you can build yep. your um, build your marketing emails integrated with XPlan, so it pulls through all your, your CRM, a, a list, of, list of email addresses from all your clients. Yeah. Um, but it also, you know, you can, it also manages all those activities. So LinkedIn, you can post on LinkedIn. We can manage all our blogs um, on our website nice. and all that sort of content creation and, and mapping yep. out the calendar. So a real marketing marketing content calendar and then you know sending out the newsletters to clients. So just trying to bring that I think there's there's not really much in the advice space as far as marketing goes for clients. No, not if even. anything at all. So not for no, certainly. I mean there's the general ones that are outside of advice, but certainly not not many within advice. The only ones I'm aware of are in the US. You know, they're okay. not Yeah. Yeah, they're not here for sure. Um so yeah, it's uh <laughs> They're definitely ahead of us on the marketing front. Yeah, they might be behind are. us on other things, but they're definitely ahead of us on marketing. I think um, it, it's actually majority of advisors. You know, they, 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 you know, there are some really good advisors that you see on LinkedIn, and have got some great yep. content. Um, I think generally, though, advisors being probably aren't great at that whole marketing piece, no. and, and and thinking, well, understandably, wh where do where do I where do I start, and how am yeah. I going, where am I, where do I start, and how am I going to do this, and how am I yeah. going to how do I make this all happen? Um, it's, yeah. it's just overwhelming, and it is. and you, it's almost like I'll worry about that another day. You know, that's that's not yeah. that's not today's problem. Yeah. yeah, and I think even though we're in a world now, I mean, I, I don't know about what you're hearing from advisors, but I'm certainly hearing, you know, there's more clients, and there are you know, d days in the week sort of thing. So there's yeah. loads of new business. What I think though marketing is going to be about now is that, well, making, sh making sure your marketing attracts the clients you want. Yeah, correct. Right. So it's, yeah. it's niching it rather than the general, woohoo, doors open, we'll take anybody, <laughs> uh, which has been the old school uh, way of marketing and yeah. advice. I think that's where it'll get clever, you know, is when people can really tailor their messaging so that it attracts the right people and almost repels the wrong ones. Yeah. Correct. You know, it's like, oh no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Good. Perfect. <laughs> Saved you and me time. This is awesome. <laughs> so looking further down the development path, because, I mean, like myself, you have a particularly operational lens on this stuff. Mm. So you're sort of coming at it from really the granular, how we do it day to day. Do you have anything way down the track that's like the, the ultimate unicorn wish item? You know, like, oh, if I could just fix this thing, you know, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, I... <laughs> Look, I would like to be able to produce an advice document from here yep. um, under the current, you know, under the current regulation scheme. That's, you know, that's a big job to have your, yeah. your, your super and your investment comparisons and your all your different yeah. modules and things like that. Um, fingers crossed in the not too distant future in the, in the, the new world of advice and where we yep. land with that. Um, hopefully that might be a bit easier, that we could be able to produce, a, you know, simple, easy to read advice documents from from the software. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's so interesting when you talk to people outside of our industry and you you talk about those frustrations and they just look at you so blankly, like, "What do you mean it's hard to produce documents?" Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and they're sort of right in that yes, there's thousands of permutations, so without a doubt there are. But honestly, that's all they are. It's just that our tech hasn't kept kept up. You know, like it's it's just that it's still clunky and difficult to do those things. Yeah, it's all, um, it's having all the it's, it's having all those comparison tools on those yeah. modules and and yeah, how much detail the advisor wants to go into all those sorts of things. Yeah, and I, I've got to say that's what to me, you know, one off really good tools like the product Rex, I think are really powerful because they just do that thing well. You product know, Rex and they is, nail it. Is, yeah, Product Rex is great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, you know, quick to understand, easy to use, and it does the thing really well. Yeah, you know, correct. so yeah, so it's it's powerful. And the more we get of those, I think probably the easier for people like yourself to just go, All right, do I need to develop that or do I need to plug it in or partner with or you know, those sort of things. Mm. Um, whereas currently you're right, it's sort of all or nothing for some of this stuff. Um it's just all a bit clunky and complicated and and difficult. 
Is there any of the elements we've missed? Have we missed a, an app or a section of the tool? No, no we, we, we've, covered, covered we've, we've covered it all. Woohoo! Well done, team. <laughs> all right, Advice Explorers. If you'd like to find out more about the iComply2 or IC2 system, then the website link is going to be in the episode show notes uh, along with the gentleman's LinkedIn details. So I'm so sorry <laughs> that you may get people <laughs> reaching out on LinkedIn, but that's a good thing. Oh, and they can find your Calendly link on the website, which I've got to say, I've just got to go back to that. <laughs> I love it when people are that open about being able to chat to you about things. So uh, I think more advisors should be doing that. Um, I know we're all wary because we just don't want people to make appointments, but honestly, they don't. I I doubt you've ever had a willy-nilly strange appointment set through the website link. So, No, the only only time you get an appointment is you have to send the link and say, here, literally click here and, and, and book in my calendar. Right. So I think it just shows an openness that's really positive that we could all do do with a bit more of. So thank you so much uh, for joining us on the show and kudos for diving into the adventure that is software development because it's something <laughs> sometimes a little shark infested, but you are fighting the good fight. Um, and I look forward to seeing where the tool goes in the future. Thank you so much for having me. So folks, a bit of a new one there, right? Are you a current user of IC2? What a cool name. Uh, do you agree or disagree with what we're chatting about? Has it caught your eye? Are you interested in more? No matter what, please share your insights in the XY community platform because uh, I think, you you know, we're all a bit curious and we'd love to share everybody's experiences. Um, in terms of what I think, you know, I've got to say it's, it's really refreshing actually to see a tool for advisors and advice practices that is actually putting some energy into pipeline management. Um, this is one of those things that's always seen as solely, you know, a practice manager job or a, you know, a business owner job. And it's sort of rarely done in a really snapshot, visual, easy to use way. And it's why, you know, many businesses use tools like Monday or Trello or Asana, um, you know, as we were chatting about. But it can actually be invaluable, you know, for more than that. It doesn't just need to be the practice manager looking at things. It can be for every role to be able to see where their clients are in the pipeline, you know, quickly identify any files that maybe are stuck, you know, when there's something's just needs a nudge or, you know, it hasn't progressed or those sort of things, you know, it can be a, also be a really great overwhelm lead indicator too, right? When you can look at the pipeline versus the individual's capacity and go, oh no, wait a minute, this is about to go pear-shaped. Um, you can even plan for leave, you know, office shutdowns over Christmas. All sorts of things become more manageable when you have this sort of type of insight or lens. So, you know, I really um, high-five the efforts here for helping us start to see things this way and really getting that whip or work in progress sort of view of what we're doing. Because if we're all going to get more effective, we are going to need to look at things this way and not just granularly on an individual task basis. Now, sort of along these lines, actually, it's interesting uh, for this week's episode, but, you know, we cover the Curiosity Corner. What's the app, Peter? Tell me what's the new thing um, that you, you know, caught your eye. Uh, the Well, this This week, the app that caught my eye is called Motion. Now, you can find it at usemotion.com. Now, their tagline is, there are now 13 months in the year. That's almost horrifying, right? No, no, no. (laughs) What they're saying is they're getting you back an extra month. You can feel like you can get more done. And I came across this uh, tool because I had, at a particular point in time, I had a specific challenge, right? I was actually covering the workload of another team member who went on extended leave, right? And so rather than just running a practice and other sort of, you know, doing this, other sort of things that I was working on, I was also on the tools, constantly dealing with clients. And so I was juggling a lot more tasks than normal and basically just felt like I was constantly making to-do lists, bumping things, um, and couldn't ever get a real handle on if I was making progress. As the more I did, the more tasks that seemed to get created, yeah? so. I actually ended up using Motion with my calendar app, so it's sort of event embedded in um, Google Calendar. I think it does it with others also. And what happens is client work, so you might have just had a meeting and you know based on that meeting there's a certain amount of work that needs to get done. Then let's say it's, you know, review, collation and production or new advice is away, whatever it is that triggers that, we all know that it's about X hours for review, whereas it's Y hours for an SOA. 
Um, so as soon as I become aware that that's going to be down the track, that there's a point at which I'm going to have to do that work, then it gets entered into motion for that, you know, just with the client's name, the amount of time and a date ideally I want to get it done by. And motion, and you do that just as you come across them. So it's sort of like looking at your future workload. And motion then uses AI to assign that workload into all the gaps in your calendar, between meetings, between conferences, get it done before your exercise. You define when you are working, you know, the definition of that or when you're available, and it fits them in. And what's cool is you don't then have to bump the tasks, you know, just because a day gets blown out by something that's out of left field, you don't have to bump them. Motion does it for you and then it optimizes it for you. So what this ended up doing is I really rapidly got a good handle on how far ahead my workload efforts were booked out, right? So how far ahead was I going to need to make sure I had the time to get get all this done? And I could then determine if, say, I could take on an extra opportunity that came up or a new project I wanted to kick off based on how far out the client work was scheduled by motion. So to be honest, for that window of time, it truly saved my sanity. Um, And it actually also really empowered me to knock more things off in bite-sized pieces as I, you know, when I did the small section of it, maybe it was only a a portion of that work and ticked it off in the app, then I could see the impact it had on the scheduling of all the other work that got shuffled around. So it's sort of quite empowering in that sense. So you feel like you're really making progress. So check it out. Let me know what you think or if you think it adds, adds value. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice, tech fix, automatically sent to you each Friday. And if you'd like a speaker to run your audience through client portals as the next big thing in advice tech, along with a step-by-step process to work out if, you know, they even need one and how to implement it in the practice, then I've actually got an upcoming either an initial webinar on the topic or even a full-blown in-person masterclass. Um, So feel free to reach out if that's of interest. We're also going to be covering that as part of uh, our Niche Down and Scale Up workshop in February. Um, So after we help you work out exactly who you want to serve in 2023, you can then work out if a client portal is the right way to add that value. If any of that is of interest, then please reach out to me on LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'm going to look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 